Welcome back to another Testing Tuesday video. I have been using the Simplex that is made by Note to Macro. I've been using it now since November 2018. And man, it has been a great metal detector. I bought this thing as soon as it hit the market. Uh, I saw the I saw the link on Kelico. I had a little extra money that month, and I said, "Man, I'm gonna buy that thing." Had no idea anything about it. Didn't know anything. I didn't, I didn't watch any videos. I mean, this thing was brand new, and I said, "No, I'm gonna get this thing for its price. I'm gonna get it because all I had was an Ace 400, and what was the selling point for me was that it was waterproof to 10 feet. So I want to do for the next couple, three or four series of testing Tuesday videos is I want to show you a few things about the Simplex and it may only take a couple videos, but y'all remember the old red bucket that I made that is my testing bucket now. Um, I'm gonna pull that thing out and we're gonna do some testing with this thing. And I wanna see what this thing will find and how deep it will find it. I mean, I've you've seen the test, you've seen what this thing will do out there in the field. But for a Testing Tuesday video, I want to use this bucket and I want to see if I place some coins and rings and things like that inside those tubes at different depths, what it will ring up on this detector. And also, I'll throw in some iron and some uh, nails and stuff like that. And we'll, enter, we'll in, enter those, interject those in some of those pipes as well. So that way we can kind of get a better understanding of how this machine performs when it has to deal with trash. So let's do that now. All right, got the simplex with the elliptical coil on it, small elliptical. Again, I got this uh, carbon fiber shaft. Those things are awesome. And of course, I'm gonna put it in, turn it on first. I'm running 2.77, see a uh, 2.77 version. And also, I'm gonna run this thing in Park One. That's my favorite. I love Park One. Run it one bar from the top, and we'll ground balance it over the dirt. We'll ground balance it shortly. I'm going to go ahead and mute it for now. And I'm going to show you what I have that we're going to test today. I have my high school ring from 2003, Landmark Christian Academy in Easley. And uh, it's got my name there. And uh, anyway, I was number 19 when I played soccer. But uh, yeah, I <laughs> got that. That's, uh, let me look how many carat it was. I'm sitting here telling you all about my school when I went to. and I'm not telling you. Okay, it's a... Uh, it's a 10 carat. It says 10K on the inside there. They even have a name engraved in it. Then I have the ring that I found at the flea market with the striker. I didn't even test it with a simplex. So we're going to test this. And this is a uh, sterling silver. And then I have another silver. I have a mercury dime, 1941 mercury. We'll test this. And also I have a wheat scent. From 1951 we'll test that now I brought some junk I brought a nail so old this old rusty nail here we'll test that one and then uh, it's not really junk but I mean it, it is what it is an old uh, shotgun shell head stamp that there we'll test that we'll also test the good old pull tab and then we'll pull out another pull tab one of the more recent newer ones newer design and then I have a roofing nail now these things here ring up higher because it's got a bigger head on it but uh, we'll test all these we'll interject those with some good targets and see how they turn out I want to see what the ring will do now we've done a couple testing couple testing videos with this uh, uh, with the simplex here but we're going to stick this thing at about the let's uh, let's start with two let's see what we're doing with two inches but uh, we're going to test it Alright, two inches. At two inches, it's showing 32, and it is showing two to four inches down. Well, you know, it has the two bars, so it's saying, well, it could be up to four inches. So, let's drop it down one. Let's put it in here. Alright, it's showing, it's not consistent, but it's... 21 and 24 is what it's showing up on the screen here but it's not consistent though so that's the very end i'm going to pull it up all the way pull the pull that all the way up okay now we're getting it again there we go 
it's showing it six inches down. What's really good about this elliptical coil, it is very stable, very stable. Now the stock coil is not as stable as this, so you can run this thing wide open all the way up sensitivity wise and that'll give you more depth that'll pick up those smaller targets that's deeper so i like to run it one bar from the top or at the top especially when uh when you got pretty good ground and it's not it's not so uh it's not trashy so but let's see if i can get it down to the next level technically six inches it's almost three that's almost three inches there that first one so I would say that second one is almost five inches down. So this here may even be about seven inches. So it's not 100% accurate. I guess I need to take it off of vibrate. All right, I get nothing six inches down. We'll go around it and make sure. But yeah, it's nothing. There's nothing. It's almost like there's nothing there. I'm going to change it over to field mode. Field mode's a hair bit different, deeper. But I'm still not getting it. So six to seven inches as far down as you're going to get that ring or about five inches i mean five and six inches that's about as far down as you're going to get it very interesting now that's with the sp24 coil we'll have to do some other testing with the stock coil later on but that's what we're at right now i now have the same ring at four inch to four inch level mark it's technically about four to a half inches we're going to test it with a nail in the second in the two inch level so let's put a nail here kind of put it in the center in about the same area that and that and let's see what this says I still have it in park one mode Wow it's masking it all right since you can't see what I'm seeing, everything's showing four inches. I'm getting a 21, 24. Every once in a while, it's throwing up a 38. It's pretty consistent at a 25. But I got a 59 just now. So it's all over the place. But it's a consistent signal. So when you go over something, and it's not giving you a great tone, that doesn't mean go on that might mean there might be two things there one might be masking the other so with this next test same ring same level same location now we're going to add a pull tab to the two inch mark and i have exact measurement of how far that thing is in there so we're going to put this right over top of it let's see what it does That pull tab is completely masking that ring because it's showing me a 30, 31, 29, which that's what a pull tab is. And it's masking that. Plus, on top of that, that ring is in that area as well. So we'll take this out. I'm going to give you the best scenario in the world. You ready? How about a silver ring right on top of a gold ring? <laughs> Probably would never happen. A little bit further. Yep, about right in the middle. Here we go. Best scenario ever. Y'all ready? <laughs> 77, 79. It's showing that four inch mark, two to four inch mark. So, I mean, the, the ring is masking it. So, let's pull out the gold ring. Let's work on this silver ring. And let's put some of this other junk in there and see what it does. Click that bell. So that way you get notifications when we put this next video out. We done the gold ring. Let's start, first of all, let's go ahead and look at this silver ring. Let's see how far down we can find it. So, it's at the two inch level. I'm showing at 83, 82. It is right there, and that's where it's showing that it's at. It's right there in the center. So, let's move it down to the four inch level and see what it brings up. It is now at the four inch level. little jumpy it's showing 94 76 if i swing faster it's 70 to 73 showing four it's showing about eight inches down though 
Yeah, it's showing like it's about six inches down, which it's only four. But twelve between four and five. So I can see why it's saying six inches. But all right, let's move it on down and see if we can pick it up still. Silver ring is now in the third pipe down, which is supposed to be about six to seven inches. I'm getting it every once in a while. Every once in a while, she'll pull up a 79 or a 69. But let's get a measurement on that. I'm going to pull out the tape measure so we can make sure our accuracy. I'm going to make a correction on the depths. I actually went and got my tape measure. Since I actually finished this thing, I failed to tell you what the actual depth was inside of those pipes. From the very bottom of this or near the bottom, where that whatever's resting in there is three inches from the very top. The second one is five. The third one is seven. So I was actually finding, and I thought I was right, that second pipe is actually five inches. So that being the case, I could not hear it in the seven, but I could hear it in the five. So probably about six inches is about as far down as you're going to get with that silver ring. So let's do a couple more and we'll do some more testing on this as time goes on. Because this is going to be a long video if I don't hush. Our next test, we're going to take this old roof and nail right here. We're going to stick this in here in the two or three inch mark. And put it in there at the same exact level. And it masks it. It really does. I mean, it's, it's showing a 90, but there's no sound, hardly. A 22, 36, 45. And a lot of times you get that and you're like, I am moving on. That is junk. Y'all, there's a silver ring at five inches. Interesting, huh? There's two targets, one on top of the other. One's a nail, one is a silver ring at the lower level, and it brings up like it's junk. Learn what your detector's telling you. It's almost like it don't want to give a good signal. Now it's a little more responsive. 61, 27, 52, 34, 23, 47. So, bouncing everywhere, but there's two targets stacked on top of each other. Let's look at two more coins and just let's see how far down they'll we can find them and that is going to be a penny 1951 witty we're going to stick it at the three inch mark 78 77 we're showing four inches on the bar pinpointing is accurate it's perfectly accurate five inches down Sixty-nine, seventy-two, seventy-four, 72, 74, and then I've seen a 70. That's at five inches. Same penny right in the center. All right, now it is at seven inches. Nothing. All right, I'm move it over to field mode, a little deeper. Nothing. Sensitivity's down though. Hang on a second. Alright, nothing on it. Move it back over to park one. Gone. Wow. I moved it over to part two. See if I could hear it. Nothing. Alright, at seven inches, it disappears. Okay, for the last test, we're going to do the mercury dime. And we're going to stick it in at the three inch level. Beautifully rings up a 78, 75. I was seeing a 74 as well. Also seeing a 79 just now. Put the dime a little bit further down. To the 4 inch or the 5 inch level. It's showing 43, 46 when it hits it. I've got the sensitivity all the way up in part 1. Alright, now it's showing a 66. 
78. There it was. So it seems as if sometimes, and I know this, when you are metal detecting and you go one way, it wouldn't hurt for you to grid it and come back or go this way because that detector is going to pick up different things different ways. So remember that. So now that was at 5 inches. Just because we've been doing it with the rest of them, we're going to drop it to 7 and see what happens. Now, I anticipate you're not going to hear a thing just because we didn't hear hardly anything out of the others. Gone. Absolutely gone. Wow. Okay. Now we know. Wow. What a test. It turned out about what I expected, honestly. Um, I didn't expect I didn't expect this small coil to go down eight inches. I really didn't. Um, and the machine, I mean, it still performs very well. So, uh, but I've never actually done a test like that in dirt. Um, I did I did a while back. Um, but it was, uh, I don't know, I think only like three inches or something like that, four inches. So uh, this was a really neat test, the way that it was done. And it's all uniform, and I can do any test like that in the future. That really taught me a lot. That actually will help me when I go out metal detecting. So that way when I hear that sound, and I'm like, well, I really don't know if I want to dig that or not. Well, it might be because something bad is masking something good. And need to keep that in mind so when you go out metal detecting you remember that as well but hey if you're interested in the simplex you can find that in the description uh, if you already have the simplex and you want one of these small coils you can also find that in the description as well now one thing i did mention and we're actually going to put this to the test for sure is a couple videos ago or a few videos ago i mentioned how the bigger coil goes deeper than the sp24 and a lot of times people will take the sp24 out to a trashy area first clean it all out and then they'll put the bigger stock coil on it so that way they get deeper and we're going to test that theory out we really are we're going to use the old red bucket to test that theory so but anyway we hope you enjoyed today's video and there'll be more like this hope you have a good day god bless we'll see you next time